Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part five of my web services tutorial. This is going to be the end of the web services tutorial, and in this part, I'm going to complete the translation web service, so you'll be able to just call for a URL, and it will automatically send you back a translation. I also found a little bit of a bug in my query I used in the last part of the tutorial, so I'm going to show you how to fix that, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so first I want to address the bug. So previously we used a query like this, and what we were trying to do here is get the ID for each of the words that we passed in. And also it would pass back the words, and here, what I'm using is here are our dogs. Yes, I know that's bad English, but I would just want to demonstrate that. Whenever we issue this query, it is only going to return one R. So if you have any duplication in the query, it's only going to return one, which is going to mess up the sentence. No problem, going to fix that right now. All right, so here I have two brand new files. One's going to be called translate me, and the other one's going to be called translate test. I'm also going to use the MySQL I connect language file that I used in the previous tutorial. Nothing's going to change there, and this is just going to allow us to connect to our database. So, of course, if you haven't watched those tutorials, you should definitely watch them, at least watch part four. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start over, and I'm going to recreate everything, because this is rather short. Now, like I said before, what we want to be able to do is just call a URL and automatically get a translation uh, returned and nothing else. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a function. It's going to be called get translation and the URL that is going to be called is going to pass in what language we want to translate to and then a string that is going to be the English words that we want to translate. So what do I need to do with these English words? Well, I am going to need to trim the white space off of them. So trim and just pass in English words and there we go. I'm then going to also want to put everything in an array. So English array is equal to array and there's going to be a little bit of a duplication from the last tutorial but I just wanted to cover all this stuff to make sure that it all sinks in and everything is you know breaking broken down into its smallest amount of code as possible. We're then going to say that we want to explode these words based off of spaces and then just pass in English words and store them in the array and then we want to get a connection to our database and it is one directory up and I'm going to call my SQLI connect language just like we used in the last part of the tutorial and of course all this code is available in a link in the description and then we also want to set the character set equal to UTF-8 so that we'll be able to use all types of different characters. All right, so now we get to the part in which things change here a little bit because we need to change our query. I'm going to show you exactly what we want to do. Now, previously, we used this query. And like I said before, what it does is it will automatically cut out any duplication. So it's only going to recognize a word one time. So we want to change that. And what we're going to do to guarantee that we automatically or we keep any duplication is we're going to use a combination of a join with union all. So let's just come in here and let's just create this. And then all I need to do is after I figure out the query that I want to use, I can test it, make sure that it works, and then I'll be able to go in there and also just implement it with code. So I'm going to search for English words again in the English database. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to perform a join on a bunch of these words. So I'm going to go select and I'm going to have A in here in this situation. And I'm going to store this as word. Then I'm going to go one, just like I did before. Maybe it would help if I keep this on the screen so you can see the difference between these. So there's that. And then you're going to see the bottom part where I'm making the change. And I'm going to give this name word order. And then I'm going to be able to go in here and go union all. And what union all does is it's going to combine all the result sets of multiple select statements and it is going to make sure that you receive every single row that you are looking for even if it has duplications in it. So I'm going to go union all and I'm going to have another select inside of here and I'm going to look for dog and I'm going to again come in here and say that it needs to be in the two position and I'll do another union all and I'll do select a, these A's are the same, that A is the same as that, because remember we're using case insensitive, and we're going to go three, I want that in the same spot as before, all, select again, and this time it'll be cat, and I want that in the fourth position, and give this the name of words to search, on, and then let's put on in the next line, on, English, word, equal to, words, to, search, 
pay reference to the join there, and word again. So we're going to match everything where English words in our database is equal to words to search, which is in this area right here. And then I can just go order by and use words to search, because I defined that there, word order. And now if I take this brand new select that I just created here, or query, and jump over into my SQL, paste it in there, you're going to see that I have A twice. Okay, so now all I need to do is create all of this in code by searching through the array. I can come in here and I can get rid of this one here. And then I basically have to create this guy up here in code. So no big deal. I'm going to create my query and it's going to be equal to select English ID and I'm going to get a whole bunch of this different stuff here. So I'm always going to use this the whole way down to this first quote right here. So just paste that in there. And I'm gonna combine everything here on one line so it's not spread all over the place. And I'll leave this right here. And then after this select statement, I'm gonna close off with double quotes. And then I'm gonna get the first part of the array. So index zero, and that's gonna be the first word in my array. And then come in here, make a space, as word, put the comma in there, one, as word, order close that off with double quotes and then continue making my query. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get the size of my array, array size. And the reason why I chose to do this first part is I can get all of these different things up to this point. Well, you're going to see here everything after the very first part is going to be the same, but this line right here is going to be different. So that's the reason why I decided to do this the way that I'm doing it, because I want all of these lines to be the same. Now to get my array size, I just go count and pass in my array. There we go. And now I'm going to create a for loop inside of this and just create an increment called i and... I'm going to say that I want to cycle through everything as long as i is less than array size. And of course I'm going to increment i each time that I go through it. And then I can just go with my query equal to whatever the query was previously. And then put a space in there, union, all, select, close that off. And now I'm going to put in the next word in the array. And to do that, I just go English array. And this is going to be whatever the value of i is. And then I can also come down here. And I can, of course, close this off with quotes. And then I'm also going to put where I want it to go. See, I have two right here and three and four. And I'm just going to add one to whatever the i value is. And then put an additional space inside of there. So that's all I'm going to have to do. And this for loop is going to create all of this stuff right there. Okay, so after I create all that stuff, to continue making this query, I'm going to go query is equal to whatever the query previously had in it. And then I want to add on to that all of the additional stuff that I have here. So what do I have? I have this, and this is always going to be exactly the same. So I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to tack that on here at the end, right like that. Don't need to put a space inside of it, and then close off that, and there we are. So I got the end of my query all set up. Now what I need to do is issue the query to the database. So let's just go response is equal to, go call mysqli, query, dbc, and then pass in the query that I want the database to execute. I'm then going to create an array that is going to hold all of the matching IDs, which is what's important because I'm going to use those matching IDs then to find the correct words in any other language. Let's move this up a little bit. And then we'll go if response, meaning my query work, I need to cycle through all this stuff. So I'm going to say row is equal to my SQLI fetch array. And I'm going to put this online. I'm going to use this in my upcoming Android tutorials. So that's the reason why I created this whole thing, so that I could create a web service that I knew would stick around so that I could use it in my Android tutorials. That was the whole purpose of this whole entire thing. So, And also because people ask about web services all the time and think they're very complicated, and they're really not. So I'm going to get my matching IDs, and I'm going to stick them in my matching IDs array. Pretty simple. And then what I'm going to do is, after I have all of this set up, I'm going to create another function here called translate, and into it, translate2 is going to be passed, as well as the matching IDs are going to be passed, that array, as well as the database connection we have. And this is all going to be returned to whoever calls this to execute. Then how this is going to work is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say if is set and I'm going to test using get 
the URL data that's going to be passed inside of this. And I'm going to show you everything here. Just give me a second to get to it all. So if action is set in some way, I'm then going to say translate to. Now I'm guessing that the information is going to be passed in here, right? I'm going to skip all of the checking. You could also do an is set on language inside of here, which is where this is going to be stored using get again whenever the URL is called. And I'm also going to come in here and get the English words, which are also going to be passed inside of here. And, and I'm going to encode them. So I'm going to also decode them here, underscore get, and they're going to be stored in English words. If you want to know what this looks like at the end, just fast forward to the very end of the tutorial and you'll see exactly what it looks like. And then what I'll be able to do is go translated text and get translation. Remember, get translation is the name of this function right here. Just call on that function. And that function, of course, is going to call another function called translate. Just the way I'm deciding to do it, just on the spur of the moment. And, of course, translate to is going to be passed, just like we defined, as well as the English words that we want to translate. Both of those are going to be passed to that function. And then after all that is all set and done, we're going to say exit. And we're going to return to the caller of this web service the translated text. So all that I need to do, well, I need to do my little test to make sure it works. But I have to also come in here and create the function called translate. So let's go in there. Well, let's just come in here and copy this whole entire thing. Jump up to the top of the file. And right here we are. And we're going to create a function. And it's going to be called translate. It's going to receive translate to matching IDs and the database connection. Might as well just keep those the same. OK, so translate to is going to be Arabic, Russian, all those different things. So that means I want to also just tack on ID at the end of it, because that's the way it's stored in the database. And if you want to see what I mean by that, if I would say describe Russian, I don't know, say Russian ID. So I want to create this little string right here to use in my query. Oh, here I am. So translate ID, which is just going to be a string with translate to, to with a ID tacked on to the end of it. And I'm just going to get translate to and tack on ID underneath of it. So I'll be able to have that string to use. Now again, we had the same problem with this query that we used. So whenever I use my previous query, this is what it looked like. And I went like this. It's going to work perfectly fine. But if I have an additional 26, for example, inside of there, like you can see right here, 26 and 26, it's only going to return it once. So we got to fix that again in exactly the same way. And that way is going to be just like before. And there we go. And now you can see the duplicates show up here twice. OK, so we just have to recreate that in our code and everything's going to work perfect. So let's just paste that query inside of there just so we can use it as reference. I took the other one out, right? Oh, no, I didn't. So I'm going to delete this. Like I said, all of the code is going to contain all this. So you'll be able to look at it and I comment everything. So we have to recreate this inside of our new query. And I'm going to call this translate query is equal to and again, I'm going to do some copy in here. I'm not going to need this part right here. I'm just going to change this to word. And I'm going to say select word from, put a space inside of there. And then I'm going to put the ID in there. That's the correct ID. Translate ID. Translate to. And then I can come in and do the join part. Put another space inside of there. Say join, another line. And then I could also come in and do the select part. Select space and then matching ID and I'm using exactly the same sort of query building techniques that I used before. I'm going to get the first one first because it's slightly different than all the other lines. And I'm going to say ID one as word order and close that off. I'm going to go get the array size again. Let's just call this array size two so it sticks out. Again, going to do it the same way. I'm going to go count with matching IDs. And then I'm going to use a for loop again to generate all those union alls that you see up there. So four and I is equal to one. And we're going to cycle through this as long as I is less than array size two. And of course, increment I each time through the loop. And then I'll just go translate query is equal to translate query plus and then do union all select close that off down to the next line and we'll say matching IDs the I inside of there and then we'll put our single quotes followed by our comma and then at the end of it tack on the I plus one and then put a space at the very end of it 
and that's the end of the for loop that's going to generate all of this information and then I just need to tack on this part right here pop down here translate query is equal to the translate query again and then here I have to do something a little bit different we're gonna have to put a dot inside of there and then the translate ID and then another dot and then we're gonna have equals to and then everything's gonna be the same as this guy up here that I put in see Russian ID that's where the dot is that I was referencing and then I just copy this let's get rid of this all together so when I run my code it doesn't cause errors and let's put this down on the next line as well paste and there's all that information close that off and there we go now I got the translated uh, query ready to go and now I just need to query the database translate response is going to be equal to my SQLI query pass in the database connection as well as the query that I want to execute and there that is and then I'm going to say if translate response while and then I'm going to cycle through all of the rows of data fetch array translate response and then in the while loop translate text is going to store translate text plus put a space inside of here this is going to be the translated text obviously and then each row for the word that is going to match those IDs that I queried for and then after that string of translated text is all set up I just return it and that's it okay so now what I need to do now that I have all of this built I need to test it so I am going to create another PHP file called translate test.php and of course we could come in here and define the content for this this isn't going to be JSON data, this is just going to be a string in this situation, but I've provided you enough information here so that you'd be able to return everything, like every single way of translating this information, and you can consider that homework. I know you can do it because I gave you everything you need. You guys always ask for homework, so there's homework. So here we can define that this is JSON data if we'd like, and I'm just going to create a English words is equal to and I'm going to say this is a test it is going to be the test query I want to use and remember previously I unencoded these words so this time I am going to encode them encode and English words if you don't remember translate me jump over here da, 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 da. see URL decode so here I'm going to encode them and then like I said you're gonna be able to just call a URL and get your translation so we can say translated words is equal to and then I can just go in PHP I can do this in any language though not just PHP but I'm gonna say get file contents and I'm gonna pass in a URL and in this situation it's localhost and I'm gonna call translate me and then to that translate me.php of course and then at the end of it remember we check for action jump over here again see we're checking for action here well over here I'm gonna just put some junk information but this is gonna allow you to come in here and get you know whatever data you want so let's just say that one of the actions is translate we could use a case statement inside of there and perform all types of different types of actions and then I'm gonna go English words is equal to and then at the end of that I can put in my encoded words encoded words and then to the very end of that you can go and and I can just define the language that I want this translated into Danish seems to be very popular so let's put that in there and then I'll just be able to go echo and I'll just have this print on the browser translated words and of course put this quote right there and also change this to translated words and made a little bit of an error here in the translate me part no problem it's uh I forgot to go and get the matching English ID and then I also forgot to type in matching IDs like I have right here and if I fix those and save it you can see that this is a test comes back as Danish and if we copy that and jump over into Google Translate and paste that in there you're gonna see this is a test comes back in English so there you go there is the complete web services tutorial that does sort of transliteration instead of translation but either way i think it's kind of neat please leave your questions and comments below otherwise till next time